Sunday on 60 Minutes, a former KGB spy story about hiding in plain sight in America. He lived under the alias Jack Barsky and spent decades unnoticed in the United States. He graduated from Baruch College. His double life included families on both sides of the Atlantic. But the first, for the first time, he opens up about his secrets. Here's a preview of Steve Croft's report. So who are you? Who am I? <laughs> that depends when the question is asked. Right now, I'm Jack Barsky. I work in the United States. I'm a U.S. citizen, but it wasn't always the case. How many different identities do you have? I have two main identities, a German one and an American one. What's your real name? My real name is Jack Barsky. In what name were you born with? Uh, Albrecht Dittrich. Say that three times real fast. Just say it once slowly. <laughs> Albrecht Dittrich. How Albrecht Dietrich became Jack Barsky is one of the untold stories of the Cold War, an era when the real battles were often fought between the CIA and the KGB. Barsky was a rarity, a Soviet spy who posed as an American and became enmeshed in American society. For the 10 years he was operational for the KGB, no one in this country knew his real story, not even his family. Did you think you were going to get away with this? Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> what Barsky did can be traced back to East Germany, back to the days when he was Albrecht Dietrich. A national scholar at a renowned university in Jena, Dietrich was on the fast track to becoming a chemistry professor, his dream job. Didn't work out that way because I was recruited by the KGB to do something a little more adventurous. Steve Croft is with us. Good morning. Hi, this, this story Hi, is good. unbelievable. This spy Gail. amongst us. Yeah. <laughs> Gail, over here. Okay. Said, Hi, Nora. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Gail, hello. Nice to meet you. How are you? Very nice Welcome to see you. Welcome to CBS this morning. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's like it's this early. every day. It's early for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how did you find him? This story is incredible. How did you find him? Um, I can't really say that. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't want to oh. say that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we found out, we, we knew that um, uh, we had some people in Germany that told us about it. I mm -hmm. like how you asked him, Steve, to say his name slowly, because when he first <laughs> said it the first time, I thought that was very interesting. Were you surprised at how easily he was able to fool people? Um, I mean, he's a very smart guy. He yeah, was, uh, uh, by the time the Russians were finished training him, he spoke incredibly good English. Mm -hmm. And uh, so not really. I mean, mm -hmm. I would, the thing that's really interesting about it mm -hmm. was that they gave him like $6,000. Uh, he ended up here with $6,000 in a birth certificate, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, no social security card, nothing like this. He had no handlers, and they told him that they wanted him to infiltrate the highest levels of American business society and get close to Jimmy Carter's national security advisor. And kind of like a very difficult job. For He's a big name, Brzezinski. Yes, yeah. I'll let you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he coming forward now? It's, I think that he's, is, you know, he's getting on in years. I think that he wants to sort of resolve. He has a lot of issues to resolve. He had a family here in the States. He has uh, a family in, the, uh, in, in Germany. He said he wanted to meet his maker uh, with, the, with a clear conscience. It's also a great tale. I think he wants to like maybe write a book. He hasn't written a book yet, but he's, I think he's interested in doing that. So do we know what information he gave to the Russians and if there was any damage done to U.S. national security? I don't think that there was any damage done to national security. I think it was mostly commercial information. I think he gave them some, some very valuable uh, computer code the Russians needed. Um, and um, I think that was it. Now, but the, the hard thing about doing espionage stories is that they're impossible to fact check. Yeah. Yeah. This is all a nice, neat little package. We talked to the FBI person, and, and we talked to um, Jack Barsky, and we talked to the FBI people that, that uh, mm -hmm. detained him and finally caught him. Um, but the details of the case, you don't know really whether, because they're all classified, it's all classified. Yeah. So what's going to happen to him? Well, he's never spent a day in jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was wow. finally detained uh, by the FBI after he had stopped working for the, for the Russians. And basically, by that time, the Berlin Wall had fallen. He was sort of trapped here. There was nobody on the other side that was going to bring him back or cared about him. And so they just made a deal with him. He was going to help them and tell them as much as he knew about the KGB and the operations and who the contacts were and who he dealt with. Incredible. And uh, they let him... Yeah. 
Go, and he's still consulting with the with the bureau. He sure Thanks seems to, to yeah. want to talk. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. Any story about spies is good stories. Yeah, I think so too. Thank you. you can watch Steve's full report Sunday on 60 Minutes. Learn how the FBI finally tracked Barsky down and how he befriended an FBI agent. That is Sunday night at 7, 6 Central here on CBS.